Hi everyone, my name is Julie Sebi. I write the Analytics Corner blog that focuses on data engineering, analytics, and visualization. I'm located in beautiful Whitefish, Montana, and you can find the written version of this post on my website shown on the screen. If you find today's content useful, please hit that subscribe button and share it through LinkedIn or other social media. This week, I worked with one of our engineers on a Spotfire project where he provided a list box multi-select property control for the user to set y-axis columns. Unfortunately, his data set contained a lot of nulls and zeros, which needed to be filtered out. Limiting data when columns change is challenging, but not impossible. There are two ways to do it, and that's what I'm going to show you today. Let's start with a brief explanation of my use case. The engineer I was working with was comparing actual to budget. For the purpose of this post, I created a dummy data set with a mix of zero and null values to show you exactly how it works. I created four actuals columns and four budget columns. For the sake of simplicity, if a well has nulls or zeros, it will have them in all columns so that it doesn't matter which column I have selected in the property control. In the data set my engineer was working with, much like this one, some wells had null or zero values, and he wanted to get rid of these. While this sounds simple and straightforward, you know, just use data limiting or filtering, it was complicated because a list box multi-select property control was setting the y-axis and he couldn't just write an expression like actual capital not equal to zero. That wouldn't work because the columns could change, but it is possible. So just for a quick reference, here is a cross table where I've connected to the actual and budget revenue columns and you can see which wells have nulls or zeros. Well three is all null, well six is all zero, well 8 has a null and then a value, and well 9 has a value and then a zero. On the next page, I show you what the users will interact with. They make column selections from the list box property control that you can see, and that populates the bar chart. So if I were to change from OPEX to revenue, it updates the bar chart, and then there are cross tables below that are details visualizations and populate when the data is marked. In order to demonstrate my solution, I have placed two cross tables below the bar chart, one with the solution and one without. So we're going to look at two different ways to solve this problem, one with data limiting and then one using the show hide. And as you can see, I have implemented my data limiting solution right here and I no longer see well three, and this is the cross table without the solution that has well three still in it. So let's go take a look at what I did. We're gonna go into properties, data, and then we're gonna go into limit data using expression. As you can see, I'm using the dollar sign escape function with the property control. If you're not familiar with it, what dollar sign escape does is reads a string from the property control and put square brackets around it. Because essentially what the property control is showing us is not the columns, but just a series of strings. So in order to use it like a column, we have to use this particular function. If you aren't familiar with dollar sign escape, check out the link on the screen. Uh, and that post explains exactly how to use both dollar sign escape and map functions. Now it's worth noting that the precise translation of this expression is sum of budget revenue and actual revenue. And notice that the parentheses for the sum expression are wrapped around both budget and actual. So because the expression is adding budget and actual columns, a well is removed only when actual and budget are both zero. Now that may work for you or it may not. Maybe you want to remove it when uh, either one is zero. So let's go to the next page to see a slightly different version of this solution. And I have the same thing set up, my controls, my no data limiting, and my data limiting. And here you'll notice that the solution that's been applied gets rid of more wells than the previous solution. Well three is missing, well six is missing, and so are wells eight and nine. And I'll flip back really quickly, and this is eight, wells eight and nine are where there's a null and a value, and a zero and a value. And so these are taken out in the second solution, whereas they were not in the first. So let's go see what I did differently. This solution employs the dollar sign map function in addition to the dollar sign escape function. The dollar sign map function creates a template that allows you to repeat an expression with some variation. The result of this expression is actual revenue not equal to zero and budget revenue is not equal to zero. 
Now let's move on to the final solution that uses show hide instead of data limiting. When I was working through this solution, I ran into a few problems with it. Uh, at, in my first iteration, which is what I'm going to show you, I had to only select one column of data from the property control. So I've selected just revenue, and as you can see, I'm filtering out well three and well six, the wells that had both zeros and nulls. So let's go look at what I did there. We'll go into properties and we'll go into the show hide menu. And I have added a custom expression that is exactly a copy paste of what I have on the Y axis. And so it's using both the dollar sign escape and the map function. And I've said for the rule, I want to show items that are not equal to zero. And the problem with this though, is that when I select multiple items, you'll see that this little eye pops up and it says that the rule could not be applied. And if I go into show hide again, you'll see that there's a little error there. At first, I attempted to fix this by simply substituting the expression that I had used in my first solution. So let's go grab that. And I will place that in my show hide. And you can see that I'm still getting an error there. And I can see from the interpretation that I just have a comma, I don't have the and. So then I also tried going to grab the previous expression that I had used in my second solution. And when we apply that, Uh, you can see now I have the and, but it's still not working. And I know that, and, and what is actually going on here is I'm missing an aggregation. I'm missing a sum around these actuals, the actual revenue and the budget revenue. So let me pop over to my final solution and I will show you the expression that works. And here it is. It's using a combination of the map function and the escape function. I have updated my template to say not equal to zero. And then the template part of it is this right here where it's got quotes and, uh, well, it's essentially quotes around the word and because that I need that to be inserted into my expression. And I also have a sum aggregation wrapped around what is being passed through the list box property control. So if we go back, here we can see some actual revenue not equal to zero and some of budget revenue also not equal to zero. Now show hide works a little bit differently from data limiting with expression. And once I populated this expression, my rule type defaulted to Boolean. And essentially that means that it's going to interpret my expression as true or false. But it's going to interpret it based on the axis value. So the axis value needs to be true or false relative to this expression. And if I go into that value dialog box, you'll see that axis value is actually the only option available here. And we're not adding the custom expression in this dialog. The custom expression stays in here, and then we just tell it, interpret this cu custom expression with this axis value. With that, the show hide works exactly the same as the data limiting option. I've got wells one, two, four, five, and seven in this solution, just like I had wells one, two, four, five, and seven in this solution. And to kind of wrap things up, I created this summary page. And here I have summarized the expressions used, their translations, and the result. So here are my two data limiting solutions and here are my two show hide solutions. As you can see, the first one translated to the sum of both revenue and budget. And so if they were both null or both zero, they were filtered out. I then modified that to make it so that they would be removed if either budget or revenue were zero or null. On the show hide, it was a little bit more complicated. My first solution allowed me to only select one column at a time, 
but then we were able to modify that so that multiple solutions could be selected. Now you know all about data limiting when columns change. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please copy the link and share on social media. Have a good week, y'all.